You're listening to the Weekend Sport Podcast with Jason Pine from Newstalk ZB. And it's a warm welcome to Weekend Sport to James McConey. He finds himself conveniently on the other side of the world. He's working for Crowd Goes Wild, plainly, and NZR Plus. Nice donut, James. Well done, mate. <laughs> Thanks, Das. Yeah, always um, lovely to chat to you on the airwaves. And, I mean, I, I did say you could top and tail over here. You know, there's nothing wrong with it. A little swaz on nerf. Oh, okay, you're going to get all French on me. I'm going to have to put up with this for the next <laughs> six weeks, I know, with everybody over there. <laughs> Mate, summarise it for us. Get, let's start off. What, what's going on as far as the French? Are they still partying after they managed to lay waste to the All Blacks for the opening game of the World Cup? Do you know what? In Paris, before the game, you you might not be able to tell there was a Rugby World Cup on, although there's a bit of signage and, you know, there's definitely um, some excitement in the air, but then after that game, that vic- victory, um, the biggest against the uh, the biggest ever against the All Blacks, they were just um, loving it. And I was on the train to Bordeaux, and I had French people identifying that we were Kiwis coming up with the light with the newspaper, waving it in my face, <laughs> <laughs> and I was going, I was happy for them. I was actually happy for them. They were, they were they're actually quite gracious winners. Really, they just showed me the paper, and um, it said. French fur, and I was like, if he I was going, what? Oh, that's French iron. So I guess what they're saying is it's not just about the French flair of old, that they're made of tougher stuff. I don't think you can argue with that, what you saw out there. What did you make of the actual performance itself? Where did it go right? Where did it go wrong? Um, I, I thought the, the All Blacks, you know, started well. It was just um, actually nice to see them get into their rhythm, and then as soon as things didn't go their way, France, France's defence was just too suffocating for them, and then we started to kick too much. I thought, I thought that the some of the kicking was great, but there was there was one moment in the second half where the back climb move looked pretty promising, and instead of passing, we decided to to chip. And you know what? It just breaks my heart as a rugby fan because I just think there's still more on there if you can get an offload. If something can happen, keep the ball in hand, and and you might just break them open. But as soon as that happened, you just see any mistake, they turn into attack. They pounced on, on on the scraps, I guess, that they got. And then just the excitement and the zip and the, the verve and vigour they had, you can't argue that they were just uh, the better team and um, and they put, put away New Zealand, you know, with their chances. Are you concerned that under pressure, New Zealand start getting a wee bit flaky on it? They maybe make decisions that they probably shouldn't have made? I mean, you mentioned the chip over. Maybe maybe they should just stay with what they're good at. I mean, I don't know. What did you see? What do you think? Look, I thought um, I thought there were certain players who actually stepped up and played you know, like a lot better. I thought Aaron Smith looked young again. You know, I don't know what he's doing over, over in France. Is he uh, having a little bit of the Beaujolais? But I think there, there's something um, about those big games we actually do notice. Um, I guess, for example, the class of Aaron Smith and then the inexperience of some of the other players where you just realise, oh, OK, this is a massive stage. 79,000 fans at Stade de France whistling, singing, jeering, cheering. It is a lot to um, handle, and I think they would have been perhaps overawed, but They'll be better for the hit out. It's actually there's it's not too bad. And look, I'm 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 happy about Ethan, happy for Ethan Blackadder coming over. He's made of tough stuff. It's probably what the All Blacks need. But I do feel a bit sorry for Summer Penny Fina, who's just played the house down all year. Tell us about the stadia experience. Have they got that sorted out over there? If they, uh, you know, getting in, getting out, the food, the whole nine yards. What's it like over there, James? It's not as good as America because America have all of that sorted. And, of course, there's nothing better than sitting in your chair and someone delivering beer to you <laughs> with a backpack looking like a spaceman, so like an astronaut. But the, the, what I guess um, they ran out of beer, so that was one of, the, one of the, <laughs> the feedback from the New Zealand fans. Yeah, we're disappointed <laughs> with the rugby, but could you please not run out of beer? So that was – and also – stifling so hot hot I was up in the nosebleeds and the heat just rose and I mean I'm not sure what levels of uh, um, liquid my, my clothes were but I'd just say very high 
Okay, that's a powerful men's limit, James McConey. Thanks very much for sharing that with us. Mm. Right, back to the rugby again. Uh, England to take on Argentina. England got the victory. They uh, had a bit of fun with their boot. In fact, it appears that's all they did. Yeah, well, they had this red card. Of course, it was a head clash red card. We all know about that. Remember Angus Tarval against Ireland? Same deal. This time it was Tom Curry. He went off with a yellow card. They upgraded it to red. I feel so sorry for the head clash red card, guys. They're the ones who unwittingly, um, you know, collide with someone and the game's over. I think it's a really sad um, part of rugby, and you'd hate a World Cup final to be decided that way. So England... That they, you know what? It's like they, um, is it the old the Brea patch? They were thrown into the Brea patch where they, they thought, okay, that we're going to have to do it this way. We're going to have to um, kick our way to victory, which of course they were completely happy about. George Ford with um, several penalties, a couple of droppies, and um, Argentina only scored a try in the last minute. So Michael Checker coming down with his face looking like thunder. And um, I'm happy for England, although it was quite a boring game. So I'm just trying to think, even though it's one of the greatest World Cup victories of all time with 14 men, is it going to be called the Malays in Marseille or the slow dance in the south of France? I haven't decided yet. I like the slow dance in the south of France, although if you're a, an Australian, <laughs> it'll be the slow dance in the south of France. Hasn't quite got this the same ring about it. No, it. James, over in over the channel in England, New Zealand having the time of it, absolutely hammering the English. Uh, a couple of tons to a couple of big players. We expect they'll be big come World Cup time. This augurs well, does it not? It does. I mean, and Devin Conway here has been, uh, he scored a ton. He's one of those players. He, he's he been rewarded with an IPL contract. But when you look at every single um, England player almost getting IPL contracts ahead of these battling black caps. I just wonder, I mean, Daryl Mitchell, the England English bowlers are his bunnies. He really thrives over there. And that, that quick fire ton he got, seven sixes, I think, and seven fours. Unbelievable stuff from him. So, look, I actually wanted to see Rich and Ravinder play because I, I think he is the future and I hope that he sticks around in our one-day team. I just like the cut of the jib. I think we're going to be um, strong come World Cup time. Um, things are pointing in the right direction. And I like in Crick Info, one of the descriptions of one of Daryl Mitch's sixes was, he's moosed it over long on. I thought that was fantastic. <laughs> he is a bit moose-like, isn't he? He's a big, tall thing, and I've, I feel like he'd probably go well in the winter, just sort of trudging around. Um, but you know what? He, he's... Um, He's one of those guys who's just made the most, absolutely eked out the most of his, with his talent, Daryl Mitchell. So um, a massive success story, really. And look, I know it's only one game, but we're starting to do, you notice with those um, those last couple of T20s, things were starting to come right. It's hard when you're on tour and, and the, the team's chopping and changing all the time. But, you know, let's go on Black Caps. Up the blahs, can we say? <laughs> I mean, at least up the caps. Well, we can't say up the wahs anymore because they got down 32-6 at the hands of the Panthers. But that, and you'll well know this, that is called experience in finals time. That's understanding what you need to do when you need to do it. Though I expect the hours. You probably didn't see that one, James. Did they have their Panthers pulled down? <laughs> Okay, that's anyway, enough. It didn't quite work that one. <laughs> okay, I'm, get I'm, rid of me. I'm getting you hang, off here now, up. mate. I'll catch up no, again you hang up. next Sunday. See you later, James McConey. Crowd goes wild. And NZR Plus, the pleasure has been ours. Cheers, mate. For more from Weekend Sport with Jason Pine, listen live to News Talk ZB weekends from midday or follow the podcast on iHeartRadio.